All right, now let's discuss this further. We're now joined via Zoom by Stephen Grutz, the head of the African Governance and Diplomacy Program at the South African Institute of International Affairs. Good afternoon to you, sir, and thank you so much you know, for joining us this afternoon. Now, of course, uh, Minister Pando has been very busy you know, over the past couple of days um, talking particularly about these relationships with the EU. And of course, we know um, earlier she also hosted the um, foreign minister uh, from Russia. And of course, we know that the uh, United States as Treasurer Secretary is also in the country on her final leg. Just talk to us then about the importance of this particular uh, visit, the EU's visit, particularly as we start to talk about the support that they will be given to the country in terms of the just transition. Thank you. Yes, it has been a very, very busy week at Durko. We also hosted the Greek foreign minister. So four high profile meetings in one week. Uh, the minister must be exhausted. Uh, yes, the EU is a very important partner. Uh, China is our single largest trading partner. But if you take all the EU countries together, it is larger than China. And so we, we do need to keep our relations with the EU positive and good. And, and, and from your clip, you could see that uh, that's the case. And uh, indeed, I think the EU will be very, very important as South Africa tries to transition away from fossil fuels. I don't have to remind anybody about our energy crisis, our electricity crisis, uh, the damage that we do to the environment, and our plans to move away from uh, dirty technologies to cleaner technologies in a just way that's going to preserve jobs. It's not going to be easy, and the EU is going to be a very important partner in that endeavor. You know, just in terms of the EU's uh, visit to South Africa, and of course, uh, we saw the US also in the country. How important are then these discussions, particularly on South Africa's stance on Russia's invasion of Ukraine? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, in this conference, with, in this meeting with uh, uh, Mr. Borrell, uh, South Africa was asked by him to play a special role in uh, convincing our, our strong ally and friend Russia to end the war. And uh, Minister Pandor came back and said, it's not uh, South Africa's task to do that. It's not Africa's task to do that. It's the whole world's task to do that. So um, I think the EU will probably be a little bit disappointed that South Africa has not taken up that challenge. Um, indeed, every conflict does have its, uh, have its life cycle and will always end in negotiation. Um, but I think South Africa could be doing more to, to lean on Russia to, to end this war because, yeah, and, and, and that's going to dominate all of these discussions. It, was, it came up in the discussions with Janet Yellen. Uh, it came up today and it is the, the preeminent international relations issue with which any government would have to deal. And of course, I mean, these conversations are uh, taking place in South Africa. But one of the things that Minister Pando raised was that, uh, you know, support at a regional level when we're talking, uh, you know, the AU as well as the SADC uh, is also important in terms of development, but also in terms of, of peace and stability. Absolutely. And the EU has been a big supporter of the African Union and of SADC. They are major contributors to funding, uh, for example, on the AU in terms of peacekeeping, uh, about 75% of its budget comes from the EU uh, and, and uh, also in the, in the SADC region. So absolutely, and South Africa is a multilateralist. South Africa uh, doesn't uh, want to do things alone. It wants to be in concert with what the region is saying, what the continent is saying, and South Africa works very hard to create a, a unified African voice on these issues. On the Ukraine issue, uh, that hasn't been successful. If you look at the way that African countries have voted in the UN General Assembly since uh, March, uh, Africa has really been split down the middle. You've had Southern African countries, many of them led by former liberation movements that have abstained on the Russia issue, uh, whereas uh, many other countries, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, some of the North African countries have voted in favor of uh, what are seen largely as Western positions on uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So there isn't African unity on this point. And, and as we you know, wrap our conversation, of course, uh, all eyes will again be on South Africa towards the latter part of this year uh, when we host the BRICS summit. Just talk to us there about some of the expectations um, from that summit. 
Yes, I think South Africa is very excited and proud to be hosting BRICS, and so it should be. Uh, some of the things we're going to look at that, that will, will, will dominate might be um, the entry of new countries into BRICS. So countries such as Argentina, Turkey, Iran, Venezuela have all expressed interest in joining the BRICS, and South Africa would need to marshal support from other countries if that's going to be the case. Um, I think the the, uh, the war in Ukraine and particularly the sanctions that have uh, that have emerged would would also be an important issue that's talked about. Um, and we'll see. You know, uh, there's there's still a way to go towards the end of the year. What other issues? Uh, the the climate and, and environment is an important one. UN reform uh, is another. So thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate it. That, of course, was uh, Stephen Goods, the head of the African Governance and Diplomacy Program at the South African Institute for International Affairs.